So I'm rebuilding this shop today. Uh, this is my old one that's been pulled apart. It uh, started leaking from wearage of the shaft. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is the seals, what they look like. This seal I'm fixing on this shot here. I've replaced it before. This seal lip around here went. So I replaced it with a another rotary, much thinner. It ended up leaking. So I only got about a couple of hours out of that one there. If this here happens on your shock and you've cleaned it up and you've gotten a thicker seal to seal it and it's still leaking, you might want to tighten up the spring by, anyways, you can screw up that or down. Putting it down, compressing the spring will tighten it up, meaning you're going to have more stiffer suspension, but at the same time, it's going to relocate instead of all the movement happening down here and leaking on the worn out section it's going to be up here moving so we'll have a tighter seal there now also you might want to when you open it up you might want to replace all the usually they come with o-ring seals but this is a plastic seal around there this is the shaft that goes up and down causing a tight seal in there but once these wear out, you need to replace them. If it's an O-ring or a plastic seal, that's your bet. So your first step, what you want to do, is you want to remove this spring. You can do it plenty of ways. I've seen people compress them with uh, cable ties. That's a very long process. I tried to give this one a go, but the shock, the spring's way too strong. I think this is 1,000 pound uh, spring, so. I can't do that with this one. What I'm going to have to do, just checking that the shaft is still good, that's just dirt on there. What I'm going to have to do is compress this with a com uh, spring compressor, or a. am going to use just a big vise and just compress it all. And once the spring's compressed, you can slide out these two from there. This here will drop, allowing this to drop and sliding out, and there you can spring will just lift out. Before you release the spring, it doesn't really matter too much, but you might want to do it before you release the spring, is to release the air pressure from the from the shock or the nitrous. It's only a tiny little bit of volume in here, but anyways, have it pointing up or else you'll lose oil through it and in mine there is no pressure at all. Once the pressure's out, as you can see, slides back and forth very easily. Once you put load pressure under it, once you fill it with air or nitrous, it's a lot more stiffer to do that. But I've got no oil in there so anyways you're gonna remove the clip from in here. Mine there is it's a big screw so I'm gonna to have to unscrew this. When you're undoing this, you've got to be prepared that there's oil going to be in here. What you want to do, if you're pretty sure that you haven't lost any oil, you've just lost your seals inside, you lost air pressure, or you're just doing it just to change the oil, what you want to do is measure out how much oil was actually in it. Just add a few more drops onto that uh, from loss through the seal over a few years. Um, just saves you doing a little bit of research, finding out exactly how much oil goes back in. Now this is a very cheap shock. It, it costs about 100 or 80 bucks to buy. And the main reason why I'm trying to repair this one is because it's a very unusual one that's a certain size and it's been very difficult to get my hands on one of these. Any other size. Well, you can, with some different models you might need to actually press these out because this one here this one here in particular is pretty much pressed in but this rotary one that I inserted is actually not that hard to push in so I can probably maybe even pull this out some proper force I've pulled out the shaft. As you can see, there was complete oil starvation here. 
the seal was not sealing properly from this little rotary seal. Incorrect use of the wrong seals will lead to damage. Also, if starvation, you'll wreck the O-rings or the little seals here. Seems to be okay and maybe usable again. So, I'm going to give it a crack. As you can see, slides down way too much and wiggles around. Uh, the actual shaft here doesn't seem to have too much damage or no damage at all. I did scratch it here fairly severely, uh, but the seal won't actually drop down to there. Uh, it will actually drop just a, just above it, so I'm lucky that in that case. Um, actually, probably probably go straight to that because once the dampener takes a bit of the blow, it will compress. So maybe I'll put a little spacer in there to raise the dampener just a fraction. Anyways, because my rear tire keeps touching my uh, my uh, mud guard, so I need to raise the dampener up a bit, harden the spring up as well. So at first comes to worst, my back tire doesn't hit my mud guard, so I'll do that. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up. Also here, all the gunk in there. You don't want any more dirt in there. It's going to scratch the the piston, that's this, and the ball. I don't know if they're the exact terms in rebuilding shops, but I'm going to use them because you guys will understand what they are. Now, this bolt's usually uh, pressed in, well, they put the bolt on and then they press the top of it so it doesn't come undone. Last time I did this, I just tapped it with a screwdriver. I'll do that later on again. Uh, when you're pulling it apart, put all the parts in order so you do not get confused in which way they go back on again. So, as you can see, I'll have it all lined up here. So, cap doesn't matter. The ring can go in after. Facing the right directions, so just like that, like that, like that, and that can go in the bin, but just for now I'll place it there, cap, and dampen it, shaft. Clean them all up and we can reassemble.